When it came to figuring out what we were going to do for our 20th anniversary, we started saying, okay, who would the audience want to see again? And then it kind of revealed itself that the one thing they all had in common was they were either a hero or a villain. They were either really well liked or despised. I think it was Burnett that said, let's just do that. Let's just do heroes versus villains. Tom Westman is probably the greatest overall winner we've ever had. And by that, I simply mean everybody liked him across the board. There's nobody that watched Palau and said, wish Tom hadn't a won. I'm ready. I'm good to go. Colby Donaldson, when you look up heroes in Survivor, he's the first. I think Colby has something to prove. He came back in the All-Star season and was pretty flat. He had a lot of hype around him, and he didn't do much. Nine years later, he's in better shape than he was the first time around, and he seems very focused. I want to win. Oh, yeah. Candace, I think, is a surprise to a lot of people. I think most people probably don't even know who I am. Mutiny is a big thing. Nobody had ever done it before Candace, and nobody had ever done it since. And it was, if you don't like the tribe you're on, step off the mat. She stepped off the mat, and the reason being was, I belong on that tribe. That's who I want to win with. That's who I'm loyal to. They need me. We saw that as heroic. A lot of people see a mutiny as villainous. In this case, we didn't. Stephanie, I mean, her first season in Palau, she was one of the most heroic women to ever play. Left alone, the last remaining person on her tribe, and fought her way and actually ended up merged with the other group and still stayed alive until deep into the show. I don't think there's any question Stephanie's a hero and that a lot of people will probably be rooting for her again. I want to win. I want to be, I want that title with the money, of course. Amanda, the only person I'm pretty sure in the history of Survivor to play the game for 78 days. She went to the final both times. I'm not going to settle for anything less than getting to the end. The only thing Amanda lacks from being the greatest female hero ever is the closing argument. She needs to go watch the verdict, watch Paul Newman work a jury over. That's what you got to do in this game to win. James is a guy massive in size, and he's just sort of the quiet giant. And I'm not sure about James' desire to win. You know, James was a guy voted out with two idols in his pocket, two hidden immunity idols. He didn't play either of them. But I think what James has learned is it's not about the challenges, it's about the talkers. If you ask me a question, I'm pretty much prone to tell you the truth. I'm not really good at shucking and jiving most of the time. I think that's where James' education needs to come into play if he's going to win. If you're going to do heroes versus villains, you have to have Rupert. He is probably the most popular player ever. Kids still love that tie-dyed pirate with the beard, spearing fish and saying, ah! And Rupert is still the same. He's a little older, but he's still got the beard, he's still got the tie-dye, and I think kids are going to still want to see him get in the water and look for fish. What I want to prove to myself is that I can still do it. Sugar is an interesting choice for Hero because she gave us another dimension. Sugar's whole game was, I want good people to win. So by definition, she is a heroine because she wants goodness. And she did her best to get bad people out of the game. And I think Sugar is back to try and make that happen again. Sugar's probably the type that would say, I don't care if I win as long as somebody on my tribe of heroes does. I'm just going to try and keep my friends as long as possible and get rid of the people that I don't want to be on the, the island with. If there's a guy that could rival Tom Westman for being one of the most likable guys to win the game, it's JT. Played a great game. Very much like Tom. Athletic when he hand, had to be, social when he needed to be, had a really good alliance, and knew when to cut it loose. Tom had Ian, JT had Steven, both of them took them all the way down to the end and then cut them loose and, and won the game. This whole new ball game, whatever it takes. JT's definitely a hero. Sari is the woman who got up off the couch 
and played Survivor. Now Suri is back for a third time, and she's very different. Suri is a very confident woman. Physically, she looks different. Mentally, she's different. She now knows she can do anything. I want to just relax this time. I've never been able to go and relax and just play. And if she can last the first five or six episodes, she will be a major threat to win. Randy called himself the king of Gabon. He was one of the most despicable people. Randy's a wedding videographer who hates love. Randy had nobody to come visit him during the loved ones. Had he had a loved one visit, there was nobody coming. You know, I don't have any family that I'm going to miss. I don't have any real friends that I'm going to miss uh, too much. Randy's a villain, and the thing about Randy, he loves being a villain. He's glad you don't like him because he doesn't like you either. Courtney is such a clever villain that I dedicated an entire segment to her in the Survivor China live show. Courtney may only weigh 95 pounds, but she can slice and dice you with her language like nobody else. She knows she's not the strongest woman, but she also knows how to play the game and, and find her way. And man, when she's doing her interviews, she will destroy you. Watch out. <laughs> Sandra is a quiet villain, but Sandra is for sure a villain. How do you figure out who's good and who's evil? Sandra did things in the Pearl Islands like dump all the tribe food, all the fish they had, and then set it up so that her friend, Krista, would take the blame and then never tell anybody it was Krista. Sandra won the game doing stuff like that. Her whole mantra in Survivor Pearl Islands was, as long as it ain't me, that's a villain. Poverty engineered one of the greatest female alliances ever. They took out all the people that were loyal to them. They, they don't have a friend in James anymore. They don't have a friend in, in Ozzy anymore. And Poverty was the ringleader of that group. And for that, Poverty, in my book, is a villain in this game and is definitely somebody that could win again. I want to form a relationship with every single person out there and it doesn't matter if I think they're a threat or not, I'm gonna consider everyone a threat. I think it says a lot about Survivor that 19 seasons in, we still found somebody who in one season cracked the top five most notorious male villains of all time, and that's Russell. Russell is the most devious player ever. I think some people are gonna like me, but most people are gonna hate me. Russell is full on devious, and after what he did in 19, those guys better watch out, because he will damn sure do it again in 20. Tyson is a really interesting villain for a lot of reasons. One is he's a Mormon. And he's a despicable villain. And he, as he said in his season, I love making people cry. You know, he really does. And I don't think it's a put on. I think he really didn't like a lot of the people on his tribe and let them know. There's nobody there that can beat me in anything that takes talent. I'm hoping that Tyson lasts long enough that we can get some of those one-liners and also see what will happen if Tyson can get in an alliance that doesn't betray him. Jerry is the poster child for the Black Widow. She is the ultimate female femme fatale. And man, lo and behold, nine years later, Jerry still looks good. She looks pretty much like she did the first season, and she's got a different way she wants to play. I'm not gonna stay fixed to one alliance this time. I'm doing whatever it takes. Even though she's on the villain's tribe, I think she wants to play more heroic. So it'll be interesting to see if that works out. I think Danielle could last for a while. What Danielle is really good at is aligning with the right people and then staying out of the way. And like she did in her season, she got down to a situation where she knew she was going to be in a tiebreaker. She needed to know how to make fire. Terry helped her make fire. And then she betrayed him and voted him out and cost him a million bucks. That makes her a villain and I'd say makes her a decent threat to be in this game way past the merge. I just can't wait to get on the island and start playing the game. I'm just pumped. Boston Rob, for me, was a no-brainer. The only question was, would he do it? You know, Rob married Amber, who he met during Survivor All-Stars, asked her to marry him during the live show, then had a televised wedding when they did get married, and they just had a baby. And now he's coming back out here to play. And I think one of the guiding philosophies for Rob was, you know what, everything we really have 
came as a result of Survivor. Everything we have in our life has been because of Survivor. She's like, you have to go back. And if I were betting and I had one shot to put my money on somebody, I'd put it on Rob. The thing about Coach that I find so fascinating is people absolutely hated Coach. He didn't do anything. An interesting thing about Coach is that he said, last time I played for the honor of the game, this time I'm playing for the glory. I've got several tricks up my sleeve that I'm going to throw out there. This time Coach wants to win. Can he win? No. But if somebody's smart, they will take Coach with them deep into the game because he's entertaining as hell, he'll keep you laughing, and he's really no threat to ever beat you. I'm so happy with this group. I mean, this was hand-picked. If you're not happy with this group, then you're not a Survivor fan.